Bernard, I have in my life at times considered the possibility of what parapsychology, ESP, psi phenomena might uh, contribute to our understanding. Um, so the first question I, I would ask you is what, uh, what, what's your confidence level that there are such things that go beyond our physical capacity to understand in the traditional way? Well, first of all, I have to emphasize that this term psi or psychic encompasses a multitude of senses, sure. and, and that's part of the problem. I mean, there, there are some aspects, such as telepathy, clairvoyance, which I do take seriously, that there are other aspects, such as uh, precognition or the ability for the mind to affect object psychokinesis, which I, I would say are a, a, a bit less certain, but I still, in principle, regard as possible because I think there's so some evidence. So that's precognition is, is a knowledge of the future, so mm -hmm. and whereas clairvoyance means I have awareness of something going on Absolutely. now yeah. in some way that mm -hmm. without my physical mm -hmm. senses. So you're differentiating. Okay. Right. I, I, and then uh, psychogenesis, which is the claim that the mind in some circumstances can affect phys the physical right. world. Right. Now, in a sense, it happens anyway through the brain, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, we right, don't right. understand how that works either. But, but so the point is, what's important about these phenomena, if they're real, it does show the mind is directly influencing the physical world, if it is correct. There's some interaction. There is some interaction. And that's why I'm saying you need to accommodate psi consciousness in physics, because if consciousness is able to affect the physical world, you better have a theory of physics which accommodates consciousness. So that's sort of where I'm coming from. But on the other hand, there are another, a range of other phenomena which are which are sometimes called psi, which I don't give credence to. So you have to be discriminating in, in what you take okay, seriously. But, but at least in some cases, as far as I'm concerned, 99% of it can be uh, illusion, delusion, fraud, or whatever. It doesn't matter. If there are some isolated cases in which it's real, hmm. then that changes our perceptions of reality. This is not a, this is not a majority vote like an election, how many psi yeah. phenomena are real. You know, if there are just a few that are real, then, then we have to Absolutely. pay attention to that. So we agree. And I mean, I would have to say that, you know, I'm not going to say definitely these phenomena is real or not, because most of my colleagues don't believe in these phenomena at all. I mean, I would say with some of these phenomena, I would give them a, a relatively high percentage. In, in, other, words, in other cases, I'd okay. give them a relatively so, so low percentage. So the high percentage ones are the ones I want to focus on. Mm. So I, I, it's not for me to adjudicate the accuracy or inaccuracy or statistical validity of this or that experiment in, in clairvoyance or, uh, uh, or remote viewing mm. or telepathy or whatever. But what I'd like to ask you, as a physicist, Mm -hmm. that if it were true, if we put on the table the assumption that there are some phenomena, uh, take telepathy and clairvoyance, your most confident categories, that perceptions can occur without the mediation of the traditional human senses. I think that's a kind of a simple yeah. definition. How on earth could that happen? What are possible theories that would enable that to be true? Well. I suppose the first sorts of theories historically well, involve some sort of signaling which goes through from one brain to the other, for example, in telepathy. The, in the old days, people used to think maybe there was some form of radio transmission which would explain telepathy. Now, for various reasons, I don't think that theory makes sense, and, I, and in fact, I don't think any simple physicalistic explanation based on transmission using electromagnetic waves or neutrinos or any other sort of particle. I personally don't think that sort of Yeah, they've done experiments in putting people in cages. It doesn't affect the, you know, to prevent electrical signals and that, the, whatever the data is, that none of that ever affects Exactly. It. So, I mean, so basically I, I, my own view is that those sort of trans simplistic tra physical transmission theory. theories, yeah. if you like, of, of, of side don't can't really be made to work. There's another category of explanations which involve quantum theory, because this, we, we've talked before about how consciousness may be involved in the collapse of the wave function. Well, people, and the, we've also got this phenomena of entanglement, which mm -hmm. says that systems, even if they're spatially separated, can be connected in, in, way, in ways which you wouldn't anticipate in classical physics. So another approach is to say that maybe telepathy, the links between minds which are spatially separated, or even our ability to know what's going on somewhere hundreds of miles away which we can't see with our physical senses, maybe that's to do with the fact that we're all entangled in some weird quantum mechanical way. Now, that's probably the, the view which is currently most popular among parapsychologists. It's not my own favorite view. I mean, I, I personally, my own favorite view is that 
the, the way to explain this link between minds and indeed between minds in the physical world is to say that they are, there is some sense this bigger space. And this bigger space is in some sense links your mind and my mind. So just as we say there's a physical world which reconciles different, millions of different observers' observations of the physical world, I would say that there is this mental space and which is what allows this connection between different minds and between minds in the physical world. Because remember, the physical world is also part of this, this big mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would see that uh, if you allow that there are some phenomena, which is very controversial, mm -hmm. and as I said, it's a, either a very small a proportion of the purported claims would, might be real or zero. I'm not sure which myself, but it'd be very small or zero. But if there were some, what you're saying, the transmission theory is out the window. I think everybody agree with that. Quantum effects, you're very skeptical on. Somewhat skeptical. skeptical so I, I don't I, think I, it's the whole explanation. Yeah, yeah and, mm -hmm. and, and there's all sorts of issues. How come quantum effects affect the brain? It's wet and, mm -hmm. you know, hot and wet and kind of quantum collapse and all that, then you need to go to some other theory and you ha you, 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 you're postulating this mental space. But what I would like to emphasize is, I mean, I made this distinction between the quantum theory and this mental space. I'm not rejecting the quantum theory altogether. I mean, it's clear that if you do want physics to come into, consciousness to come into physics, quantum theory is going to play a role. All I'm saying is I don't think that the quantum theory alone is explaining the phenomena. It, it may be a part of it, but I don't think it actually, what I'm claiming is you do need some form of mental space to actually accommodate these sorts of phenomena, if you believe in the phenomena. And of course, one can have arguments about whether you believe in the phenomena. And all I would say is, I mean, most of my, Friends and colleagues don't believe in the phenomena, but, but, it, but they're the ones who haven't had the experiences, I suppose, very often, or haven't studied the literature. I, I've studied the literature and I've maybe had experiences to some extent, which is why I do think these phenomena are worth taking seriously. But, and, I mean, all I would say is that I've always taken the sort of minimal view that even if you believe the probability of these phenomena being real is small, their significance for our final theory of physics is so huge that it's worth putting effort into studying them. I do have my own personal bias that some of these phenomena are real. I know most of my colleagues don't share that opinion, but I've got many who do. And, and, and it's because, in some sense, I suppose I've, I've invested a huge amount of my time thinking about this on the, on the gamble that I'm correct that they are real. But if they're not real, then the sort of speculations I'm talking about would, would then also go out of the window.